Okay, here we're going to be looking at a consolidation using the periodic inventory system. And to understand how it works, we'll compare it to the perpetual inventory system. Since the perpetual system is normally used here, and you're probably familiar with the perpetual system. And for our comparison purposes here, we're going to compare here the trial balances associated with the accounts between the perpetual and the per periodic system. And for our example here, we're going to look, be looking at Corporation P, the parent, who owns 80% here of Corporation S, the subsidiary. So Corporation S, the subsidiary, has a non-controlling interest here of 20%. And our comparison here is going to be based on a consolidation worksheet here for the year ending 1231X2, or the second year. Okay, let's go through the basic differences here between the perpetual and the periodic inventory systems. It's going to be based on the accounts here used in the trial balances and the differences that we have in these trial balance accounts. So first looking at the perpetual inventory system and remember our consolidated worksheet, worksheet we're looking at here is a 1231 X2 uh, consolidation date or the end of the second year. So the first difference is would be here in this inventory account. And for the uh, perpetual inventory system, we use the uh, end of the first year, 1231X1 here as our inventory account. And that's the ending inventory for the uh, first year here, even though our consolidation here is based on the uh, consolidation date here of 1231X2. And we have an adjustment here for the inner company profit on that ending. It would be based on the ending inventory here of 1231X1. Now moving over to our per periodic inventory system here. Now looking at this inventory account here, that's the beginning inventory here of the second year or January 1st of the second year here. So we're using the beginning inventory of the year rather than the ending inventory of the previous year here. And then our adjustments for the uh, uh, would be based on this beginning inventory account here to eliminate any intercorporate profit here. Um, and that would again be based on the beginning inventory whereas the perpetual system that was based on the ending inventory of the first year here and then also this inventory account here is carried over to the consolidated income statement okay for our other main difference here looking at the perpetual inventory system we have a sales account here and a cost of goods sold account for those sales here and that cost of goods sold account here that's adjusted for any intercompany profit here based on both the beginning inventory and the ending inventory. Now for the periodic system instead of using a cost of goods sold account here we use this purchases account here and that here is adjusted as well for for the uh, sales account here but the difference is that, it's, that the purchases account here is carried over and into the consolidated income statement. And along with our purchases account here, we have an inventory account carried as an asset. And that inventory is based on the uh, 1231X2, or the end of the second year date here. And that is also adjusted here, but that's adjusted for any profits here for the ending inventory here rather than both the beginning and ending inventory. And that inventory account is also carried over here to, to the consolidated income statement. And then along with that inventory account, we have a cost of goods sold here for the adjustments to that inventory. Now, this inventory here is recorded at the price paid, and any adjustments here would go against the cost of goods sold here. Other than that, that's the main differences here between the perpetual system and the periodic system. And we're really concentrating here on the periodic system. OK, now let's look at this periodic inventory system here and the eliminations and adjustments that we'd have to make on a consolidation here. And we're going to look at a consolidation worksheet. We're just going to be looking at this inventory account here. So first, let's look at the elimination here of any inner company profit contained, in this case, in the Corporation P's beginning inventory that they purchased here from the sub uh, subsidiary corporation. And they had a uh, beginning inventory of $80,000 here. So with the gross profit rate, we come up with 20% here. So the profit in the beginning inventory would be 
20% times this $80,000 here beginning inventory that would give us $16,000 here. So what we would do here is we would go and we debit retained earnings of the beginning of the year you're here for Corporation P, 80% of the 16000 here would give us $12,800. And then retained earnings for the beginning of the year here for the subcorporation S here, 20% of that times 16000 would give us $3,200. And then we'd be crediting the inventory account here for year two uh, for the balancing amount here of $16,000. So just going and looking at our entries here, our inventory account here at the beginning of the year here, here we'd credit that for $16,000 here and that would be broken up here between the return earnings here at the beginning of the second year here for the parent corporation at $12,800 and then retained earnings here at the beginning of the second year for the sub corporation here uh, for uh, $3,200. Okay, and next here we'd eliminate any intercorporation sales between this subsidiary and the parent here. So we'd go in, we'd debit sales uh, that were made here to the parent corporation, in this case for $240,000. And let's just assume that they were divided up here as follows here. So instead of using the cost of goods sold, sold that we'd be normally crediting here, we use the purchases account. So first here for by corporation S here to corporation P, let's just assume it's $160,000. And then the balancing amount here would be purchases by the corporation P to the outside here of $80,000. So in this elimination here, we're eliminating the sales against purchases versus cost of goods sold that would have been used in the perpetual system. So the periodic system, we're using the purchases account here. And that is shown over here on our uh, a consolidated worksheet here. Sales, debit for 240000 and then we lump it all together here to purchases. We'd credit that for $240,000. And next here, we'd eliminate any intercorporation profit by the uh, uh, subcorp S here for goods contained in the parent corporation's ending inventory. And, and our inventory, ending inventory in this case was $60,000 here. So the gross profit rate again, 20% here. So the profit in the beginning inventory here would be 20% times 60,000. So that would be $12,000 here. So what we do is we'd uh, debit our cost of goods sold here for $12,000 and then credit our inventory at the end of the second year here for $12,000. So going over to our worksheet here, you can see our inventory account here at the uh, at the end or the twelve thirty one of the end of the second year here. We'd credit that here for $12,000 and then our cost of goods sold, we debit that here for $12,000. So this cost of goods sold here was an adjustment here to our, for our inventory account. Okay, now to allocate our income here between the parent and the subsidiary. And that would be the same income amount in allocation as the perpetual in inventory system here. The periodic and the perpetual are the same here for both the controlling interest and a non-controlling interest. So first looking at the Corporation S here, the subsidiary had internally generated income here of 120000 and then we'd add the realized a profit here in the beginning inventory of 16000 and then we had the unrealized profit here at the in the ending inventory. We extract out the $12,000 so we'd have an adjusting adjusted amount here uh, of $124,000. That would be the sum of these here. And the non-controlling interest share was 20% here. So the non-controlling interest would get $24,800. Now looking over here at the parent, uh, their income here. The internally generated income in this case was 140000 and then they would have gotten 80% here from the subsidiary corporation, 80% of the $124,000 adjusted income that leaves $99,200. So the sum of those would give the controlling interest here $239,200. So when we calculate the income here for both the parent and the subsidiary, it's it's really the same between the perpetual inventory system and the uh, periodic inventory system.